I'll just invite you. You want to say a few words about Zineke. Thank you for hosting us tonight. What we try to do in Brussels is to uh, set up projects through uh, social and artistic work that we do in all neighborhoods of Brussels, where through processes of about one and a half year time, we try to connect people that don't meet each other in daily life to think on a method on how they together can create artistic projects that at the end are shown in one big moment in the streets of Brussels, which is called the Zinneke Parade. We're really very, very glad and happy to have you guys here. We're going to have one single unified conversation. It's not a decision-making process tonight. We're not trying to like land something that's super solid we're having a sensing in conversation together. In just a moment, I'm gonna invite you to go find somebody else that you don't know and just think about this evening. Who are you? Why are you here? What is something you've learned tonight? to the content for tonight I just wanted to hear were there a few examples of that you heard of the other person saying what their learning was I learned in a non-rational level about what politics is about I, I can't say this in concepts mm -hmm. but I hope I can I can put my message across it's really tough times on all levels and I think the only thing people can do to resist is to manifest their resistance and show it also on the streets this is perhaps the first um, European meeting, at least this, the one I know of, the first European political meeting of commoners. There are people from DiEM25 here where the, the big issue is deepening democracy and there are commoners here where in essence the big issue is deepening democracy but, it, but in all realms of life. I'm just happy that Agnieszka and Lorenzo are here and they can tell us what, what, what's going on right now in DiEM25, but it's also the other way around. We need to inform them of what's going on in our minds. So basically, the idea is exploring the potential in terms of exploring the synergies. We might figure out tonight the next steps to do, the next step to do together. DiEM is not so much a network as a, a pan-European political movement. Uh, it is a rather ambitious, perhaps crazily ambition, at, um, ambitious attempt to say that we need to open up a third space in the European Union. Between the bankrupt establishment and the nationalist reactionary international, there needs to be an ambitious third symbolic and political space that is able to articulate a positive vision forwards and guide this great transformation this of historical proportions forward. DiEM and the commoners is like uh, what we are working on and fighting for and what uh, we all fighting for, it's really uh, similar stuff. All this practice that, are, uh, that we use at the local level at this right to the city level, at this working with the local communities. These are really important practice that we can also use or try to practice on the higher, higher international level and try to learn from our local activities and local experience how to change the situation, how to change the situation internationally. And this is the moment, like if not now, like when? The only way that it is going to happen is by doing it. Uh, just like a common emerges through the act of commoning, a European surge of democratic agency emerging, emerges through a surge of, of, of political agency across, across the continent. I think it's really time for, not the end, but, but the movement of the commons 
to reclaim that agency of the European Charter on the Commons, to bring that process to fruition and to have a set of demands and a set of political uh, proposals that we, we recognize ourselves in and that I think also movements such as Diem can really take up uh, as, its own, uh, as its own voice. We are working on practical ways of saying this is how we believe things should change. Because when you want to have political movement, when you have political action, you have to be concrete. You have to say, this is what we want. And we're working very hard on that. And I think uh, uh, an assembly like the Commons Assembly has the enormous benefit of bringing enormous amount of good thinking. What we're trying to do, at least one of the things that I I like a lot when I participate in DM and how I think it is how do you put structures in place, not that become a structure, but that allows for all of that teaching and knowledge to continuously reinvent itself. That's the structure we're, we're looking for. And we're designing it. And that's why I'm here. This is, it's amazing. And we need all this input. We're not going to be able to do it by ourselves. So the first thing is, okay, let's sit and what do you think? How do you want to do it? <coughs> It's very important that to rethink also the question of a comment in the sense that it's a, a word and a concept that can be easily pulled in many directions. It can be easily emptied. So commons, it's like any other word for me that can be taken like sustainability, that can be co-opted and can be uh, uh, used by the left, by the, the right, and whatever you want to put it in it. The kind of commons that I actually would like to work on, it has, it, it, it unveils the risk of emptying words and creating very specific battles that have to do in changing regulations as well, the way we know it now. A new definition of commons has to be dealing with um, basic battles. Specific battles, I mean, in terms of, for instance, uh, fighting for uh, basic minimum income or living wage, of measures like uh, child guarantees or basic health care, which is not equal for all member states. What I really like about the Commons as an idea is that it actually could potentially include, I think, many more people in an engaging vocabulary than does the what I believe are the initial premises of DiEM25, which are really for democracy in Europe and for transparency. And I think the notion of the Commons really resonates with what with, with, with people are. And I think actually we might use this kind of thinking to, you know, build bridges among every kind of uh, sort of inhabitant. So that's just a plea to not be kind of too resistant, but try to include also people that are now kind of ruling and, and professionals. One thing we have to do is to consider uh, as real people, people we, with which we don't agree now the people who are left, who feel left out by globalization, who don't understand globalization, who are menaced by globalization, we have to understand them and we have to talk to them. Conservative people are commoners, unless we shut them out. Many people are uh, working on commons, but they don't know it. So they, they speak about self-management, they speak about uh, uh, social appropriation or reappropriation and uh, economic democracy. Of course, the concept of commons is very important to expand, but we have as well to, uh, to, um, to exploit all the kind of words which has a link with it and uh, that is really uh, building the commons. We, we kind of own that term, we kind of... <laughs> take control of that and uh, rationalize it and make it something ideological, then we are kind of shutting them out. You must, uh, first of all, have real human contact with people you don't agree with. Otherwise, the we we construct will be more menacing to those people who say, oh, it's worse than we think. As, as long as you cannot express what you're trying to do in terminology that is relevant and directly working for people who live outside the cosmopolitan bubble. And I agree that in the long term the cosmopolitan bubble will probably win, but that's not the point. The point is how do we help people today who are not in it? We have to ensure that everybody knows how they can get involved and that can go from being a part of a very big 
mega cosmos like Berlin or Brussels or London, or it can be in a tiny village growing, a, having an organic farm. If you want to explain something, you have to show to people that you care about them. Not just about the point you're making, but about them. Because we are bloody people, smug, because we are so smart and academic. Yeah. We've been through universities and we've been learning all these fine, fancy words. But with those fine, fancy words and rationalizing everything, we are building even like bigger walls than Trump can ever build. Maybe it's time for us to really dig our noses in the work of Paulo Freire, a man who developed an extraordinary pedagogy, which actually bridges the language of academia, the language of technicians, and the language of people with little formal education, and shows people in the grassroots that they already know what the jargon means. They know it by experience. That it's just a question of framing it differently. We look at the analysis that DM25 makes and we recognize something that is absent in other discussions. And I think that's the key point, is that you say, we need to change the way we look at things and the way we describe things. And I think the key point there is to develop a narrative that is better and more realistic than the neoliberal narrative, which is intellectually bankrupt but which is still dominating the debate. We need to have a dynamic dialogue between movements like the DM movement and the commons movement, if that is something like that exists, because there are many commons movements. But mm -hmm. the differences, the differences, the possible differences outright have to be on the table. Traditionally, many of the people, let's say in the traditional left, and some of the people I know in the DM movement, are also, in some ways, market fundamentalists. Not in the sense of exploitation, but of macroeconomic analysis. Economic growth to be able to distribute afterwards. Mm -hmm. Whereas the commons movement um, is looking at the processes of life, how we live, how we eat, how we build, how we grow food, what we eat in the in the health movement, how we keep ourselves healthy, how we make our medicines. This is the process of making science. And often, often, the left and the urgencies and also the need, the real needs of people, I'm not blaming them, I think it's, it's very logical, is responding to, in the debates with the right about micro. If we could just have one or two or three percent less austerity, then we'd be in utopia, then we'd be in heaven. You're quite correct, David, that uh, there is a tendency in uh, leftists, including erratic Marxists like Yanis, to think that more growth is the answer, to think that the New Deal is the answer. Then you said something else, which is the uh, idea that a, few, a bit less austerity might be the way out. And naturally, that also is nothing that anybody believes. We do believe that we need something close to a New Deal for Europe. But that New Deal, critically, cannot be the kind of infrastructure-driven, large-scale investment New Deal that we know from the past or that Donald Trump is going to implement. And this is where DiEM needs commoners, it needs the movement for the commons, not uh, to, to decorate its movement, but to craft its message when it comes to what a new economic policy, a new investment policy means for the European Union. The commons discourse or the commons idea is really about, it's not just about ideas or uh, um, uh, demands, it's really about building this other world, and to, uh, about digital sphere or the local sphere, it's about doing it at the same time. And I think, um, as, as David also pointed out, this is not necessarily something that has been, that has transpired very strongly in the, in the, in the narrative or the demands that we've seen from DiEM25. Um, so I think it, it would just be interesting to hear, and also some of on the other points about maybe the, the identity politics and left and right, just be interesting to hear from the people here that are representing the M25, that are also representing the commons, you know, they're also part of the commons, and I know it's not for them to say, but if they're, if you, do you see the possibility of the space being made for that, of these, this inclusion of these points that are so important for the commons movement, if that's something that you see that could become part of this broader narrative, or if that's some, or, or, or not. Because um, that, I think, is in the end the, the question 
um, you know, is it, can we work together or, or is it, is there not, is these synergies, really crucial synergies, are they not there? We need a New Deal policy that is going to solve the ecological problem, not going to make it worse, right? We should join forces like uh, uh, the Commons uh, transition, uh, collaborative economy, uh, the uh, circular economy, and somehow de develop a, a, a common project where we can, we can show people there are solutions in all, in all fields. This is where, you know, a radical kind of thinking movement like DM25, I think that's where it should be and how it connects to the commons. You know, I think that's where the commons is that massive movement that can come below, from below and make that happen. If we're thinking of something real, the commons uh, have a lot of real politics to, to, uh, to bring to, uh, to, um, to democracy. I like this notion of, of trying to find out how to build a different politics out of a different social system. And coming from uh, hacker spaces and free software movement, I think that the key point is to not make a nicer and uh, more friendly system, but a, a system that is uh, outperforming the competition. So when Linux wins over Windows, it's not because it's more friendly, but because it's more effi efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to do the work to make a more efficient and better political system in terms of just like doing it. We can do it better than today, obviously. Alternative options actually work and that they are better than what is going on at the moment. The people don't get the information. Yes, we need a new narrative and a new sort of way of framing these issues and uh, all the, more than the politics, but the social issues of everything. But you need, to, we need to educate people better and, and make information accessible in a way that people understand it. I see places like Brussels, places like London, places like Berlin, all these sanctuary places of the values that we hold here. They're becoming a network of sanctuary, of sanctuary places that very much remind me of the Hanseatic League back in the Middle Ages. Are we entering a kind of second Hanseatic League? The politics that uh, govern this continent, and not only this, are uh, still working based on the national identities. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a topic that I would like to explore more, how we can uh, either get uh, towards a city-based uh, and common-based uh, kind of governance or any other type of governance that is not bound by this uh, national identity. What is a nation nowadays? What is it to have a nationality? What is it to have a passport? A young person in Lisbon has much more in common with a young person in Berlin or Brussels than with a young person that lives like 50 miles away in, in for example, Caldas da Rainha or Torres Vedras. So isn't it time that we think about a new way of reframing political participation beyond the nation state and even beyond the state level, the supranational and the national level? I would like to disagree with the point on identity. Um, I think identity is extremely important and nationalism as part of, of how you look at your identity is something that is very dear and close to people. And I agree with the point on taking away the context, but you have to understand their context before you can take it away. I've heard tonight hearing a lot of bad things about the nation state, but I think they have an important role in redistributing and redistributing resources and redistributing wealth and also making sure that the means of production are not exploitative. We are not nationalists, but I think we have to identify homes. We have to, the feeling of home. The feeling of home for me are bioregions. It's seeing the moon the other night over the sky. It's feeling part of a community like right here. There's people doing global commons. I can see commons now arising that are having the uh, idea to scale globally right from the beginning. And it's no longer only in the margins. I think we should be aware of that and support it. We can certainly come on our way out of a beautiful, uh, collectively managed garden, but around us will be wasteland. And as we know from history, there is no way that you can 
maintain a local specificity if around you if, is, is wasteland. This is really the time to be together and to rein in and to bring in a political discourse in order to make the kind of aspirations that we share as commoners concrete, possible, alive. I came here to think about what we're going to do. And this is the point you made at the beginning. Concretely, what are we going to do? We're faced with massive ecological crisis, people. <laughs> we're faced with you know, a fascist president in the United States, Brexit and all the rest is happening in Europe too. We have, we have a very serious deterioration of the entire world system at the moment. So what are we going to do? That's the kind of question that politics asks. Many of the meetings uh, with the uh, commoners of the network meetings, and uh, I spend it hours and hours on uh, putting uh, sticky notes on the walls. I think I, uh, I don't know, I posted thousands of sticky notes on the walls. Uh, and I always thought, OK, but it, it's sometimes it's useful, but sometimes it's very useful also to have this one hour and a half to talk about this deep, deep, uh, important topic that we have in our head. This is politics. This is how we are doing politics. Like we need to imagine something to do something at the beginning. The question is how to change all of this concrete energy, concrete actions into really the power that can change the world. And I think we need this kind of discussion. We need to talk about politics. The first concrete invitation is for everybody here, either individually or as a grouping, as an alliance, as a network, to really participate in the drafting of the policy papers that DiEM25 is going to out be outlining over the next weeks and months, notably when it comes to the economy, when it comes to the New, new Deal. To do this either through both, uh, through participating in the consultation that's open on the New Deal for Europe economic policy. So this is the one that Varoufakis is, is, is leading. But I would be more ambitious. I think we need something like uh, a commons group within Diem that can directly make sure that the commons is not only a part of a wider economic policy, but that there is a very clear uh, a policy and political proposal on the commons that every time Yanis goes around and speaks, that we go around and speak, that our groups go around and speak, we also say that DiEM is not only for this new deal, it's for transparency, it's for migration, but it is also for the commons. This is what we mean and this is worked out collectively in a way that is participatory and brings everybody here uh, together. It doesn't mean that DiEM appropriates this policy, but it means that it, it, it uh, is something that DiEM can say it's, uh, it's out there and we stand for it, we stand by it. I think that we don't need policy papers anymore. There was no such thing as a political program in the Trump campaign, if you noticed. <laughs> and that was one of the reasons why he won. Nationalism is, is a trance induction. You can induce a trance through focusing on something narrowly, yeah, in a way that excludes the context, yeah? So to say, lock her up is a trance, yeah? You know, take back the borders is a trance. I'm less concerned or less interested now in a new narrative for this than how do we deal with uh, equivalent inductions? And they, and they need to be trance inductions. It's, it's paradoxical. I don't like it, you see, and I, don't, I haven't quite got a hold of it yet, but, but that's what it means, yeah? I have a message. I surely have a message. I can't get it across. I'm not an author. I'm not a communicational designer. I have no idea how to touch people's hearts. I'm too academic. I'm all what you are blaming us for. <laughs> what we need to do is we need to make the comments great again. <laughs> because they have always been. Make the comments great again. <laughs> and therefore, I suggest, and therefore, I suggest build this coalition with communicationists, designers to make the comments great again. Mm -hmm.